Well, accused of killing her own husband, and she apparently told detectives that she did it because she was, quote, at her wit's end over infidelity issues. Local 10's crime specialist Bridget Matter live now outside the jail where she's being held with the details. Bridget. Calvin, this is all according to new court records. It says that this woman told detectives she found out her husband was cheating on her, so she killed him. And the report says after a heated argument, that's when those shots went off, and this woman is now in jail on no bond. 45-year-old Denise Malcolm is facing a first-degree murder charge in the death of her husband, Rowan Malcolm. A lengthy arrest affidavit lays out that Denise was, quote, at her wit's end with his lies and deceit over allegations her husband was cheating. Following a 45-minute fight, police say Malcolm shot her husband multiple times. The officers made entry into the residence to check on the well-being of anybody who may be inside. They did come across and encounter one male individual who had suffered multiple gunshot wounds. Malcolm appeared in court. Ms. Malcolm, you are here on one count of premeditated murder. The report goes on to say that Malcolm had contemplated suicide, but as her husband was bleeding on the ground, he said something that changed her mind and she shot him one more time. And sadly, when this happened, police say the couple's twins were in the home when the shooting happened and one of them did call 911. I was talking to people the other day on the panel. I can't wait to talk about this tomorrow. Hopefully Q adds this as a part of the conversation that we have. But I was talking to people and it was like, yo, Anton, is never ever a situation after the kids get to a certain age for people to be, be able to walk away. And I think we were talking about it as a result of Judge Mathis, right? And when I see stories like this, when I see stories like this, she did this, let's, let's call it out. She did this when they had two twins in the house. That's number one. Number two, she contemplated taking herself out. And then he said something as he was bleeding out, and then she hit him again. She shot him again. That's number two. Number three, she couldn't control her rage, because we don't know whether or not the guy actually did do what she was accusing him of doing. But what we do know is that she couldn't control herself to the point to where she was willing to take the person that she laid next to's life as a result of it with the two children in the household. And so I'm sure that they're probably also going to say that this was a crime of passion and, you know, maybe even try to plead a little bit of insanity and stuff like this. But there are circumstances where you have to walk away from it. And I am 100% positive, regardless of whether or not this guy actually did it or he, or he didn't do it, that he did not expect for his life to get lost as a result of it. Monster. He was sleeping with the enemy. Because regardless of what somebody does that I don't agree with, no matter how close I am to them, I am never in a position to where I want to take their life as a result of it. And he lost his life by obviously sleeping with the enemy. And don't tell me that she loved him so much and all of that. No, 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 no. You got to walk away. There are situations and I am maybe an anomaly and maybe, you know, whatever, so on and so forth. But yes, there are situations where it is necessary to walk away. Now, we can have the conversation and say that he should have vetted better the woman that he wound up getting into a relationship with. How can you in that situation? What you going to vet for whether or not she's going to take your life or not? We can vet for women to determine whether or not they had a lot of body counts. We can vet for them to determine whether or not they're going to be a great mother. We can try to do all of that, but we can't vet for a person that's going to absolutely take your life and on your last breath, instead of calling the police, they hit you again. And she was at her wit's end. You got a wit's end where you're willing to take the father away, you going to jail for the rest of your life, and the children is going to be raised with a relative or in a foster system. And so you think that your wit's end is more meaningful and how you feel is more meaningful than what is best. And so then it becomes a crime of passion. It 100% needs to be walked away from. And so we don't even know who this guy is. All we know is this is a woman, this is the monster, this is a face of a woman that ultimately was willing to kill him and then even ultimately was, was 
thinking about taking her own self out because she didn't have no self-worth or no value outside of them. And I said this the other day, and this is the biggest part about it, is that I said that too many people are trauma bonding and they are getting into a relationship to be interdependent on each other for each other's happiness. So if you having a bad day, then all of a sudden I'm having a bad day. No, I'm still having a good day. And hopefully my good day will infect you. And then you'll start to look at life differently instead of saying, oh man, I had a bad day. No, you had a learning experience or maybe your attitude wasn't what it was supposed to be. And, I'm, and I keep telling y'all, listen, it ain't about the cheating. Forget the cheating. Forget whether he was wrong or, or any of that type of stuff. Because first of all, we can't substantiate that. But secondly, here's the thing. I am not, and I will never, and I, and I preach this and I teach this, that people have to be whole before they get into a relationship with somebody else, especially before you have children with them. People have to be whole before they get into a relationship with somebody else. Your happiness, you as a person, your happiness should not be interdependent on whether or not somebody else can make you happy. It has to come from within. You got to heal from within. And that's another reason why I ultimately say that it's very difficult for people to recover from the previous relationships because then they cleave even more to the person and they depend on them in order for them to feel whole when in reality, all you're doing is trauma bonding. And so you're looking for somebody to make you feel better about your situation. I'm not doing it. I'd rather be by myself than be with a monster. I'd rather be by myself than be with a monster because we can work through a lot of things, but I can't work through you looking at me with your eyes open and I'm sleeping. You thinking about the different ways that you can take me out. I can't do it. And so what most people do is because they are interdependent on somebody else for their happiness, they can't control their emotions and they become illogical. And then that's what translates into doing something that you never thought that you would do before. That's what gets you to your wit's end. I'm never in a position where I'm at my wit's end. I may be passionate. I may be dedicated. I'm a lot of things, but I'm never to the point to where I'm ever going to affect what goes on in somebody else's life that they can't control whether or not they was here, which is my, my child. And I'm never going to depend on a woman to make me happy and to have me crashing out like a crash dummy. I walk away first. It's, it's some situations. It's some situations that you have to walk away from as a woman, as a man, as a person. Because if you think that you're getting to the point to where you got to take somebody else out and then it also affects your children, that's it. That's it. And more importantly, you shouldn't even be having children with people you get to your wits end with. So that's my thoughts on this. I love to hear what y'all got to say. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. Also, teach Henley 40% off your first order, 20% off of life. Let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace.